Certified by Weather Rate, Storm Team 6 has Knoxville's most accurate forecast. This is your forecast first, sponsored by Knoxville Wholesale Furniture, the furniture you want. I'm meteorologist Margot Altshuler. We're watching as storms move through the area. Some could be strong to even severe. Coming up on more details and track more storms as they progress throughout the area. Right now on 6 News Tonight. Patty, Jennifer's mother, received a call. No mother should ever have to get. Deliberations done, at least for today. We hear from the family of a woman murdered in Oak Ridge as the man accused in her killing stands trial. And a deadly crash brings the Knoxville interstate to a standstill. What we know about the two people killed and who may be facing charges. But first, a stormy Saturday evening just ahead of fall like temperatures this week. Our storm team tracking it all for us tonight. Live from the station on your side, this is 6 News Tonight. Breaking news tonight, a part of Magnolia Avenue closed at this time after a pedestrian was hit by a car. Hello everyone, I'm Austin Martin, Knoxville Police on the scene right now. Officers say it happened around 9.30 tonight between Bertrand Street and Myrtle Avenue. You can see here several emergency crews still on the scene at this time. Now detectives with Knoxville Police are trying to piece together exactly what happened. No word yet on the severity of those injuries of that person hit. Of course, we'll keep you updated on the very latest on WATE.com. Calm. Well, the hot and humid afternoon turning into a stormy Saturday evening, at least for parts of East Tennessee. The chance for potentially severe storms not over just yet. Meteorologist Margot Altshuler joins us right now. Margo, when and where could we see some storms next? Austin, well, right now we are still monitoring those storms that had severe tags on them just a few hours ago, and we are expecting to see more storms as we move on in to the rest of tonight. Now, this is a heavier storm kind of near the Coal Hill community, as well as the Midway community, the Sunbright community, and Deer Lodge. You can see the reds and the purples right here. This was a severe storm. We'll continue to watch it as it continues to track east. Another area we're watching is near Deermont, Grove, Oakdale, even near, near Basil town will be watching that storm another area of concern is the storm co closer towards mason springs chestnut ridge and just north of new taswell seeing a lot of lightning with that system and one last stop for us on our radar we're watching as a shower and storm moves over jacksboro campbell county high school cumberland view and indian creek now we're taking a zoomed out look taking looking towards middle tennessee now middle tennessee is still seeing storms as well and those storms are actually going to continue to trek east eventually impacting the rest of us here in east tennessee we're going to continue to watch everything as we move on into this evening but remember we're still under that one out of five severe threat level for this evening again we're going to continue to keep you updated i'll have more details on the timing of those storms coming up austin margo staying busy tonight thank you new tonight deliberations on pause in the trial of an oak ridge man accused of the murder of 36 year old jennifer paxton felony murder aggravated rape kidnapping and abuse of a corpse are all among the 13 counts Sean Finnegan faces as his trial jury decides his fate. Six News reporter Naomi Homer was in court today as the jury began weighing the facts and the family of the victim spoke out. Raise your right hand for me. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth said to God. Yes. As the jury went into deliberation, the judge brought three relatives of Paxton's up to read victim impact statements. We didn't just lose Jennifer. She was taken from us. Starting with her cousin, Beverly Jeffers. It was so hard on us. We knew Jennifer wouldn't go for days and not contact me or, or one of us. Then on August the 6th, 2020, Patty, Jennifer's mother, received a call no mother should ever have to get. Paxton's family says her murder broke them. Patty died in the hospital, still crying and suffering over what happened in the Finnegan Dishman home. She stated and questioned regularly how if she had been a better mom or if she had tried one more time to help her, if she could have prevented what happened to Jennifer. Her cousin, Brittany Payne, says Paxton was like a sister. Get up here, please, ma'am. I have nightmares, I can't sleep right, and this past week I can't even eat right. My whole world changed, turned upside down, I'll never look at this world the same again. If Finnegan is found guilty for felony murder, these statements will be read to the jury and will be considered in his sentencing. In Anderson County, Naomi Homer, 6 on your side. 
Thank you. Deliberations lasted for about three hours today. They'll pick back up on Monday morning. For a look at this case and all of our coverage since the very beginning, just head to WAT.com and click on this story right there on the homepage. A woman missing from Cumberland County has been found dead. The TBI posting the update on social media saying that 69-year-old Roxanne Gallagher had been missing since early August. Teams recovered her body in Lake Cumberland in Kentucky this afternoon. We reported the original silver alert several weeks ago. In that alert, TBI advised that Gallagher had a medical condition that could have impaired her ability to return home without assistance. TBI saying tonight, quote, her loved ones are in our thoughts. We're learning more after an early morning crash killed two people and injured three others. Knoxville police say that crash happened on I-40 near Midway Road at mile marker 401. KPD says that it is believed that two vehicles going east were rear in a rear end crash. Police believe a good Samaritan stopped to help one of the vehicles and was hit by a truck, uh, a priority ambulance that was unable to stop. That person and the driver of the vehicle were pronounced dead, while the driver of vehicle two received injuries. Charges are pending against the driver of two, vehicle two, who was potentially under the influence. I-40 East was shut down with traffic passing on the shoulder. The road was reopened around 11 this morning. Tonight, folks in Knoxville, we're doing a little boot scooting, all for a good cause. We're talking about Kappa's boot scooting ball event. All proceeds from the event will benefit the Knoxville Area Project Access, a community charity focused on providing access to health care for low-income individuals here in Knox County. The evening was filled with tropical dancing, a dinner, a silent auction, and music from Jimmy Buffett Tribute Band. So far, our organization has helped people in our community since 2006, over a million different medical encounters and $425 million of care provided by members of our medical community. The event was held at the mill, mill and Mine. As you just heard, Kappa has been helping our community with health services since 2006. A winning combination, Family Promise of Knoxville held their 18th annual Pasta and Bluegrass Festival this evening. The event was held at the Sacred Heart School. All of the funds raised go to helping provide services to families that are experiencing homelessness in the community. The fundraiser had bluegrass music as well as all kinds of pasta dishes crafted in a competitive cook-off style. It raises about $35,000 a year, almost 10% of our, our budget. So just one night. Just one, one night. A great, a great inexpensive fundraising event. So all the money raised tonight will go help our shelter program, especially with our prevention and diversion program to keep people in their homes. It's much better than being becoming homeless. And, and what's sad, too, is that most of the families that come to us, they're living in their cars. They had no, absolutely nowhere to go. You heard his voice there. Our very own Don Dare and Lori Tucker were at the event tonight as pasta judges. Saw a couple social media posts that looked like a good time. Today, East Tennessee veterans participated in Honor Air Knoxville's third flightless flight. Now, the program replicates an honor air trip to Washington, D.C. without ever leaving the ground. This was done for all the veterans who are unable to fly to D.C. for medical or emotional reasons, allowing those veterans to enjoy seeing the memorials that were built to honor their sacrifices. This idea came to us. There was somebody in Florida that does a virtual flight, but they didn't really, they didn't build a plane. They just brought their veterans in and just put them in, uh, in a conference room and just showed them the video. So when we heard that, probably it's been now 10 years ago, we decided that we wanted to try to duplicate that. Great event there. The program was held at the Bridgewater Event Center this evening. Sharps Ridge Veterans Memorial Park is celebrating the installment of new trailheads honoring Tennessee veterans. The dedication ceremony was held at 11 this morning and eight information boards were spread throughout the park with veterans on them. The project was started around two years ago and the boards are meant to help veterans legacies live on as well as help their families find some pride. Franz Walkup, whose brother was honored at the dedication, talked about how much it means that people from around the community come out to honor these veterans. It's great. The Knoxville uh, area is very patriotic. Um, so seeing all the local support is uh, uplifting and very, you know, touching to me because our father, our brother, is honored here today. So it's it's overwhelming a little bit seeing all these families here. Um, but you know, we're very appreciative. 
The park was established in 1953 to honor the military service of veterans in our community. A traffic tracker six alert for you. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park says there will be temporary single lane closures up and down the spur this week so that crews have room to work all through next week. We're told the first round of closures will run from Monday through Wednesday. The second round of closures will run from August 26th through the 29th. The National Park says that closures will last from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. each of those days and that drivers should expect some big delays there. Zoo Knoxville is celebrating the hatch day of their beloved crane, Lieutenant Dan. Dan is an East African crowned crane, and he was hatched at the zoo back in 1999. He was given a special enrichment to celebrate his special day today. These cranes are known for their long legs that allow them to tower over the grass and spot predators and catch food. We got to talk with one of those zookeepers of the bird department about how exciting this day is for Lieutenant Dan. Dan is now a quarter of a century old, but he has surpassed the lifespan of wild crowned cranes. Uh, so wild East African crowned cranes usually live to be in their late teens, early 20s. Uh, and Dan is now 25. And so hopefully he's got a, uh, quite a few more years left in him. I think there have been some crowned cranes in captivity who have lived to be in their 30s, maybe early 40s. Uh, but Dan is celebrating his 25th hatch day today, and that's really exciting for him. The crane status in the wild is endangered, and it's not just Lieutenant Dan celebrating a birthday. They're also celebrating a birthday for Joe Sloth tomorrow. Still to come on 6 News, five people are facing charges in connection to the death of Matthew Perry, who police say are playing a part in that death. And the school year is underway. It's important to check in with your kids on their mental health, what you can do to help coming up. And we're keeping very close eyes on the radar as we move on into the rest of tonight. I'll have more details on those storms coming up. Five people are now behind bars in connection with actor Matthew Perry's death. Those arrested include the actor's assistant and two doctors. His autopsy found that the amount of ketamine in his blood was in for the range used for general anesthesia during surgery. Over two months from September to October 2023, they distributed approximately 20 vials of ketamine to Mr. Perry in exchange for $55,000 in cash. Defendant Placentia saw this as an opportunity to profit off of Mr. Perry. He wrote in a text message in September 2023, quote, I wonder how much this moron will pay. Perry's assistant, who authorities say injected the actor with ketamine on the day that he died, found Perry in his hot tub on October 28th. His autopsy found that the amount of ketamine in his blood was in the range used for general anesthesia during surgery. As the new school year gets underway, now may be a good time to do a mental health check-in with your kids. Dr. Tiana Snyder, a psychologist for Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus, Ohio, says it is important to normalize talking about feelings and anything that may be a stressor, especially at school. She says some kids may experience anxiety heading back to the classroom if they face bullying. She says there are some signs that parents can look for just in case, like isolation or loss of interest. The most important thing, she says, is to keep an open Line of communication. A meteorologist Margot Altshuler keeping a very close eye on the radar tonight. We are dealing with some pretty strong storms in the area. One strong storm kind of moving through the Dean community, the Jeffers community, the Buckeye community, even towards Smoky Junction. Now we are expecting to see this storm continue on its path east and it does have some gusts up to 40 miles an hour and it also does have the possibility of producing penny sized hail so we will continue to watch as the system moves east another area that we're watching is just a little south of that system and this is close towards elizabeth pilot mountain annadale lansing even close to wartburg we're seeing very red right here again that's just an indicator to us heavier rain is in the area another area of concern we're watching closer towards the riley community the hoop Creek community and the Yellow Springs community. Again, that's where the red and yellows are. We're also seeing a lot of lightning associated with that storm system. Now, after these move through, we do get a bit of a break, but we are going to keep a very close eye on the storms moving through Middle Tennessee because as they move east, well, they're going to impact us and those won't be until later on into the overnight early morning hours of your Sunday. Temperatures right now sitting in the low 70s. We're sitting at 73 here in Dandridge. 
74 in Knoxville, 73 in Gatlinburg, 70 in Kingston, and 73 in Crossville. A look at our six predictor heading on into the rest of this evening. Like I mentioned before, all of those storms in Middle Tennessee, notice they're going to keep coming east the later we head on into the tonight going into early tomorrow morning. Now they do die down in severity, so that is the good news, but they do still have the capability of producing heavier rains that could lead to some localized flooding, especially areas that have already seen a lot of rain just in the past couple of hours. We get a bit of a break heading on into 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, but it's not the end of the rain. It is the end of the severe and strong storms, but we do expect to see more rain as we head on into our Sunday afternoon. This is more spotty in nature however, and we'll continue to see spotty showers and storms moving into the area as we head towards your Sunday evening. The good news is after about six o'clock, we expect to see everything dying down and we're left with much nicer conditions. Our rain chances actually remain on the slimmer end as we move into the new week next week. We actually are going to remain very dry Monday through next Saturday, which is great. And with all this rain, with all these storms, it's really going to have an impact on our lows, on our highs, and on our humidity. So let's take a look at everything. Tonight, we'll see temperatures close to average in the mid to upper 60s. High temperatures tomorrow expect to be in the low to mid 80s, which is about two or three degrees cooler than average. But we do expect to see everything getting a lot cooler heading on into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Look at that, 81 is the high on Monday, 80 on Tuesday, 83 on Wednesday. And notice a record of 57 degrees is our overnight low set back in 1893 and we're expected we're forecasting actually to hit 58 so definitely something to keep our eyes on definitely something to look forward to but we will continue to track all the storms moving into the area and keep you updated margo thank you nice to see those fall temperatures heading our way hey coming up the vols land one of the best recruits in the country plus a new vol basketball player isn't wasting any time getting to know the community find out why next on six news We want to take you back to that breaking news. Knoxville police now telling us that the pedestrian hit on Magnolia Avenue this evening has died. Officers say it happened around 930 between Bertrand Street and Myrtle Avenue. Now, the identity of that person has not yet been released. All lanes of Magnolia Avenue have now reopened. We'll keep you updated through the night on WAT.com. Molly O'Brien will have the very latest on GMT starting at 5 a.m. And one last look at our radar, we do have a severe thunderstorm warning for Scott, Campbell, Anderson, and Union counties until midnight. This storm is producing heavier rains, lots of lightning, and even possibly pea-sized hail, along with possibly 60-mile-an-hour winds. A look at your wake-up weather. It's not going to be too bad for our Sunday morning. We will be seeing temperatures in the mid to low 60s, and we will be seeing partially cloudy skies. Remember, have your weather notifications turned on this evening. Margo, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Tennessee. Starts at 5 a.m.